Breacher is back with the first three episodes of season two, and it's safe to say that it's brought everything that was good about the first season of the show back with its return. I was a little bit skeptical after hearing that Roscoe and Finlay weren't going to be in it. However, the one-tenth unit, Reacher's only true friends, brings everything that I thought would be missed. Focusing on several members of that unit being killed and Reacher wanting to get to the bottom of it, let's jump into the episodes, break them down, and explain all that there was to take away from them. So let's get into it. Here is Reacher Season 2, Episode 1, 2, and 3, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This season of the show opened up exactly like how the first season did, in the darkness of night and with a murder taking place which would go on to lay down the foundations for the storyline for the rest of the season. However, this time it wasn't Reacher's brother. It was Calvin Franz, a member of Reacher's unit in the army, the 110th Division. This was a team of individuals that Reacher was assigned to bring together. Some of the best at their game, and despite not being a team before, they'd eventually become one of the strongest and most efficient teams. This whole story within Season 2 is about certain members of the 110th unit being picked off and killed. Within the first episode, we saw that Carlos Franz was the first life to be claimed. In Episode 3, we saw him being tortured right up until the moments of his death. But we also saw that several other members of the 110th had gone missing or were killed, such as Sanchez and Orozco. Meaning that three members were killed and Swan, another, was presumed to be dead. This was due to his house being broken into and being a mess like everybody else's, and also his dog being killed. I, however, don't think that Swan is actually dead. I think he could be on the run. In the closing moments of Episode 3, we saw that Swan was revealed to be working at New Age Technologies, the place where the assassin that was hired to take them out, Trevor Seropian, visited. Swan could be a bit like Paul Hubble from Season 1. A man that found himself being roped into a business and then once he realized that things were going to go south after being there, he ended up going on the run. Maybe he knew that Reacher and the rest of the 110th would be arriving and wanted to steer clear before he got there. Paul Hubble was presumed dead for most of season 1 until the end of the season, and I think this could be the case with Swan too. So I feel with the revelation that he worked at New Age coming to light and us not seeing his body like we did with Franzi, Orozco, and Sanchez, there's definitely more to come with that. This season is already portraying Reacher in a slightly different way. The first season of the show had him be quite emotionless and cold on a lot of different occasions. But already, after only three episodes, we've seen him be impacted by the death of Carlos the most, and also be intimate and express his feelings towards Dixon, something which did take me by surprise. I feel Reacher fills the weight of what happened to Carlos Franz because he roped him into the division personally himself. He knew he was a young kid compared to the others, but Reacher still wanted him there. So I think knowing that Franzi died due to being associated with Reacher, he's feeling like he has the blood on his hands, Hence why we saw a moment where Reacher hallucinated and felt like he was seeing Franzi in front of him in a deceased state. I think it's also the case for Orozco and Sanchez too. In terms of his feelings for Dixon, we saw on countless occasions that there were feelings that were between the both of them, more so from Reacher than from Dixon. When Neely mentioned her before they met up again, he said how he liked her back in the day, but also when it was presumed that Dixon was engaged, we saw Reacher almost disappointed at the fact that there wasn't going to be a chance between them. There was a line which was spoken to Reacher, which was, don't you ever get lonely, and we didn't see him answer it. After hearing about the settled down lives and the thriving careers that the rest of them had, you could tell that it was impacting Reacher. So much so that he was picking the label off of the beer, showing that he had nothing to contribute because his life was completely different to that. So we're seeing a Reacher that seems to be more emotionally engaged than what we saw in Season 1, which is something that is so surprising this early on. But I suppose because there's history with this group of people, it makes sense that he wouldn't be as cold from the off. This season of the show, like the first, also has a selection of flashbacks which are running alongside the main story in the present day. In season one, it was focused around Reacher and his brother, and how he essentially became the person that we saw in the present day, whilst also showing us how close he was to his brother. In this season of the show, we're seeing Reacher several years ago before the one-tenth unit was dismantled, from its birth and origin, whilst also in the midst of solving cases. This is being done to show us the closeness that the group had together, and how they were once strangers, but then pretty much became family. But I think it's also going to be showing us something that will connect to the story in the present day. Maybe they could have been involved in a case which was connected to Mr. Langston, and now he might want to seek revenge.
So what do we know about the people that are tracking down and killing members from the 110th? Well, we know that it's connected to a company called New Age, which seems to be headed up by Mr. Langston, an individual who was speaking personally with Trevor before he was killed about taking out Reacher and the three that were with him. He was also there initiating the torturing of Carlos Franz, and he was also in the photo alongside Swan at the end. He was asking Franz for information and he wasn't prepared to give it up. We don't know what info he was after, but I feel it could be to do with a case that the one-tenth worked on in the past. As well as that, what I thought was two completely different stories existing, but turns out to actually be connected is that Mr. Langston is also liaising with the mysterious person who goes under the multiple aliases which are made up of the initials AM. This chap seems to be a killer that's brutal, emotionless, and doesn't take anything into consideration. The most dangerous type of person. And he's the one that's connected to the 650 at 100k each, the $65 million that's being spoken about. This is something that Mr. Langston was chasing him about because they planned on meeting, but they couldn't because the authorities were waiting for his alias to clock up on the system at the airport. It seems as though he's going to be going under a different alias moving forward, a real person that looks very similar to him. This is so he can actually make the trip to New York. With the pieces of paper that were found being connected to days, weeks, and months, and the earlier months looking more successful than the latter months, I wonder if everything has gone amiss because of what was reflected on the piece of paper. I think in the next episode, we'll see Reacher digging more into Swan and his involvement at New Age, and one would imagine that Russo will have some information that would have been dug up on the company. However, with Reacher and the rest of them acting like cowboys, something which Russo didn't want them to do, we're most probably going to see Russo covering for them and becoming the type of detective that he never wanted to be. Overall review. I thought these first three episodes were just great. Even though it's set two years after the events of what happened in Margrave, it followed on so well. Reacher looks bigger and even more jacked than before, which adds to the character's badass nature, yet contrasts his soft personality when around the people that he cares about. The fight scenes were also just so good to watch, if not better than before, and it feels like we've got a whole load more set to arrive as well. My personal favorite at the moment has to be the ATM machine. It was so easy for him and it just captured everything that Reacher stood for. The story has multiple layers to it, something that I'm glad about as all of the characters feel like they have a purpose. When I heard that it was going to be involving his entire army unit, I thought it would be quite hard to connect to the characters because there'd be quite a lot of them but they're all likable and easy to get on side. The one thing that I'm not a fan of is getting three episodes in one go. We're basically nearly halfway through the season after just one week. I just don't feel it's necessary and it just cuts the amount of time short, which I think is a shame. If the rest of the season follows suit to these first three episodes, I can't wait to see what's to come. Bring it on. So, there you have it. Reacher Season 2, Episode 1, 2, and 3, Ending Explained. What did you think of the first three episodes? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.